welcome to River States 2021 Virtual Insect Fair. My name is Madison Hernandez and I am an entomologist at UCR. Today, my lab mates and I at the Heteroptera and Systematics Lab are going to teach you a little bit something about true bugs. Now, bug is an official term that we scientists use. However, when we use it, we're not just describing any old creepy crawly that you can find outside. We're actually describing a very specific group of insects called the Heteroptera um, or the true bugs. Now, true bugs share very special characteristics. Um, perhaps the two most important ones are that they have piercing sucking mouth parts. So they drink things through a straw like mouth part uh, and hemi elytra or wings that are uh, half thick and half thin. And they'll generally hold their wings in an X shape like this. You have probably seen a true bug in your backyard at some point. You may have found something like a leaf footed bug up here um, or a stink bug in your garden on your tomatoes or your fruits um, or perhaps you've been on a walk and you've seen uh, these western box elder bugs sunbathing on the sidewalk. Now if you're really lucky you may have even come across my study group of uh, heteroptera, the assassin bugs or red avid. And I study assassin bugs simply because they are super cool. Assassin bugs are assassins, they're predators, they eat other animals by sucking out their juices. The majority of assassin bugs will go after other insects like flies or wasps or bees, but there are some that will also eat spiders or millipedes, and there's even one subfamily of assassin bugs that will drink vertebrate blood. So they will drink blood from things like rats or lizards, or, or even humans. Now, assassin bugs come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and they live in all sorts of places. And because of that, they can sometimes look really drastically different. Uh, but for the most part, most of the assassin bugs or the red avians will have raptorial forelegs. And this is just a fancy word for really thick front legs. And these are the legs that the assassin bugs will use to go and catch their prey. Uh, in addition, um, assassin bugs will also have a very distinctive ridge in between their two pairs of eyes. So their head is constricted in between those two pairs, and that's not something you find in any of the other true bugs. Now, why should you care about whether or not you can identify an assassin bug? Well, assassin bugs are cool. You want to find them. <laughs> assassin bugs have many cool behaviors besides just hunting really cool things. There are a few species of assassin bugs that'll do stuff like stack ants on their body as a defense mechanism, and there are others that will go and hunt together as a group to take down really big prey. Furthermore, many assassin bugs are excellent at camouflaging in their natural habitat. So many of these assassin bugs look exactly like what they live in, whether it be dirt or whether they're on flowers or in grass, on trees, they're very hard to find. So if you do find them, it's a really big deal. Uh, and last but not least, assassin bugs can't actually make noise. Uh, assassin bugs have a ridge on their chest area, so to speak, that they can go rub their mouth parts on to make a squeaking noise. Now, if that wasn't cute enough, I am now going to introduce to you the cutest subfamily of assassin bugs that I have worked on before, and these are the ambush bugs, or the phymatiny. Now, ambush bugs all pretty much look just like this one. They're very tiny, about centimeter uh, or less and they all generally have these big soulful eyes and square shaped face and super thick clubbed for femora um, and they will use these to go and catch things like flies or bees or butterflies things that will go and visit the flowers that they live on now you can find ambush bugs pretty much on any plant in southern california they are very common um, and there's quite a diversity of them, but because they are so small, it's so, they're sometimes difficult to find, and they're also difficult to identify. Now, we look at things like the shape of their pronotum, which can be difficult for regular people to, to know the differences in. With that said, though, I will introduce to you some of the easiest species to identify, and these all belong to the genus 
by Mata. So the easiest one to identify in Southern California is uh, Phymata arctostaphylae. This is pretty much the only completely brown assassin ambush bug that you can find. Uh, and normally these would live on manzanita, which is a native brown evergreen tree that you find here in California. But when they're on foliage like this, they're very conspicuous. They're very easy to pick out and they're also uh, fairly rare to find. So they're very cool. Um, now the other ambush bugs that you will probably find around here, um, Phymata pacifica is probably the one that you will find 80% of the time when you go around here in Riverside County. They live on things like buckwheat and they generally are really small, um, even less than a centimeter. They're usually white and brown or yellow and brown and they have very pointy thoraxes. Um, and other species that you can find, but not nearly as commonly, um, Phymata maculata, this one has a very rough and warty exoskeleton that you really don't see in others. Um, and Phymata americana is also commonly counted. The points point in a different way on the edges of their pronoun from um, compared to Phymata pacifica, but they also generally have a very dark thorax. And these are more common in states to the east of California. So now that you know what you're looking for, where can you find these guys? The answer is pretty much any plant that has super tiny flowers, any plant that is really buzzing at the time. So a lot of our native plants have these tiny white flowers or tiny yellow flowers and ambush bugs will like to hang out in the nooks and crannies so that they can go and ambush their prey when it comes on long trying to get nectar. So things like pearly everlasting, California buckwheat, um, yarrow, milkweed, brittle bush, rabbit bush, sunflowers, they will hang out on. And as a bonus, there are a lot of other cool native assassin bugs that will hang out on these plants as well. So if you find any, let us know. We have an Instagram page, follow us on Instagram, tag us, let us know. Um, and with that, I will let my colleagues go and tell you about the other super cool natives that you can find here. All right, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie and in this part of the video we are going to learn about a group of assassin bugs known as the bee assassins. So as you can see from these images, they have a variety of color patterns but they are typically pretty stout and large. Uh, the scientific name for this group is Apiobaris and the common name is bee assassins. And because they are called bee assassins, you may assume that they only eat bees, right? Well, that's not the case. Species of Apiomeris are often found foraging on flowering vegetation and will feed on a wide variety of flower-associated insects, including wasps, flies, beetles, pretty much anything that visits these flyer flowers. And while we do see them feeding on bees quite frequently, this is actually a really great thing for some other insects. If we take a closer look at this picture right here, we see something very interesting happening. And you may not be able to see it until we go to the next picture. So we see here some freeloader flies. These freeloader flies will take advantage of the prey caught by bigger predatory insects to be able to eat. So these freeloader flies will use olfactory cues or the scent exuded from killed prey to find their food, and they seem to be particularly attracted to the sense of these uh, dead bees and wasps. Therefore, these bee assassins are actually doing these little flies a huge favor by providing them with one of their favorite foods. However, in order for these bee assassins to be able to eat, they have to be able to catch their prey. And they do this with their powerful raptorial forelegs that are very hairy, and they use their strength and their hairy legs to grip prey using sticky traps. There are several sticky trap strategies. One approach is to take these sticky resins from plants and uh, apply them directly to the legs. An alternative strategy uh, occurs in species of the genus Heniartes, which is a closely related um, group of assassin bugs to Apiomeris, and these bugs have been observed on plants that possess sticky trichomes on their leaves and stems, and they seem to scavenge for these small insects that get stuck on these sticky structures that we see here. 
So if you ever want to observe these unique behaviors, I will now teach you how and where you can find Apiomeris. So there are about 110 species of Apiomeris with distributions ranging from Canada to Argentina, and they occur in a wide range of habitats, including the desert biomes of the southwestern U.S. and even Amazonian rainforests and foothills of the Andes. But I'm going to focus on the three species of Apiomeris that you can find here in California, and hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will all be experts and be able to identify these three species all by yourself. So let's start off with the California bee assassins. As their name suggests, they are distributed across California and south into Baja California, Mexico. They are generally found in coastal uh, regions, coastal mountains, and even the Sierra Nevadas, but you are not likely to find them in the Central Valley or deserts. And you'll typically find them on flowering plants such as California buckwheat, you will recognize this species from the other two that we are about to talk about by its coloration. So you can see that they are mostly black with some red on the wings. They'll also have this white margin on the abdomen and some red rings on their four femora. And from the three species, this one is medium sized. They are about 15 millimeters and you can see this species here on someone's finger. For reference, you can kind of imagine how big, uh, how big Apiomerus californicus is. Up next is the yellow-bellied assassin bug, which is probably the easiest to recognize because it is the largest of the three species. They can reach up to 20 millimeters. Additionally, this species is very colorful and stands out with its yellow abdomen and these very colorful stripes here on the pronotum. So you see they go from yellow to black to red to black to red. Uh, and they can be found in mountains of southeastern Arizona as well as southeastern California and many parts of Mexico. So if you want to find this species, I would recommend looking through plants, particularly acacia plants, which they seem to be found very commonly. Last but not least, we have Apiomeris casieri, which is the smallest of the three species, measuring about 11 to 14 millimeters. And you can recognize this species by the orange bands on the fortibia and the orange pronotum, and also the orange uh, margin of the abdomen. And you can find the species in deserts of um, Southern California, as well as other deserts in the U.S. and in Mexico. So in summary, there are three species of Apiomerus that you can find here in California, and you are more likely to encounter Apiomerus californicus. However, if you are in Southern California, you may encounter Apiomerus flabiventris, which is very flashy and colorful, or you may encounter Apiomerus casieri, which is much more orange. So now you're all experts at identifying these species, and I wish you the best of luck on your search for these beautiful bee assassins. Thank you, everyone. I will now pass it on to the next group of assassin bugs. Hi, my name is Sam, and I'm a graduate student at UC Riverside, and I study thread-legged assassin bugs. Thread-legged assassin bugs have the scientific name Emicyne. They're one of the largest subfamilies of Reduviidae, or assassin bugs, and they have around 95 genera worldwide and almost a thousand species. As you can tell in these pictures, Emicyne look pretty different from other assassin bugs. They have, their mid and hind legs are much longer and skinnier, which is what gives them the name, the common name, thread-legged. They also have what we call raptorial forelegs, which allow them to manipulate objects around them, uh, which is especially useful when attacking and feeding on prey. Emicyne are found all around the world, and they're even found in caves, and there are some species that are found on islands too. In fact, there are some that are what we call endemic to islands, meaning that they're only found on that island. However, the reason that I find Emicyne really fascinating to study is that there are several species that are closely associated with spider webs, and some that even feed on spiders. This here is a video of an Emicyne nymph or an Emicyne baby feeding on a spider in Panama. 
there are two species of MSIME in Australia that have been really well studied behaviorally, and they found that they will actually strum the spider web in a way that mimics the vibrations that prey make when they're caught in the web. This will lure the resident spider out so that the MSI is able to successfully attack and feed on the spider because the spider will think that there's prey caught in the web that it wants to go feed on. However, for most MSI, we don't know how they're able to feed on spiders or if they're feeding on the spider or prey caught on the spider web. MSI are found all across California in both urban and rural areas. They're found on messy spider webs, tree trunks or at the base of trees. There are some that are attracted to lights. You can also find them in palm fronds and in leaf litter. However, while they can be found in a very diverse array of habitats, they're not as commonly uh, seen as other assassin bugs. There are a few different species that are found in California. Uh, one genus that was commonly encountered is Empicarus, uh, Empicarus culisiformes and Empicarus rubromaculatus are the two species that are found in California. And as, a, you, as you can see, they're smaller and they also have uh, this dark and white pattern along their wings and uh, legs. Senilomoides arizonensis is another species you can see, and MSA brevipennis is another uh, much larger species than the other, two, other three discussed. And with that, I'd like to thank you for spending this time with me learning about third-legged assassin bugs.